Hello friends, uh, today happens to be the last lecture of the series that we started a few months ago. The series was about uh, feminist theory texts and uh, we came from the 18th century uh, feminism onwards through the 19th century uh, to the 20th and then into the 21st because things you know that are there in the previous decades spill over to the next century and that happened in the case of the uh, author, the thinker, uh, the black feminist or the, the activist writer called Bell Hooks. And uh, today's lecture uh, uh, has the right title, Black Feminism and Writing Autobiography. So which means that <clears throat> I'll be talking in general about fe black feminism, about uh, uh, the ideas and views of uh, Bell Hooks. And then in the second lecture, uh, I'll talk about writing autobiography. And uh, both these uh, aspects of uh, thought are important from the point of view of uh, women's assertion in our world, uh, which is a phenomena that is recent in nature. And many of us still do not find the uh, new ideas that emanate from feminism as acceptable as are the orthodox, well-established ideas. Anyway, uh, the, the uh, name of the writer uh, is Bell Hooks and it's a strange name and uh, when people asked her uh, what her actual name was, uh, then you know she said that uh, uh, Bell Hooks was the uh, name of the uh, grandmother and she borrowed it from there and uh, that her own name was, uh, Bell Hooks was, uh, uh, <coughs> her own name was uh, Gloria John Watkins. Uh, Bell Hooks then was the black feminist writer's pen name. Do you know what pen name is? Pen name is when you have one name uh, that is given by your parents and the other name that you assume yourself in order to uh, form, in order to construct a, a, an important identity. So that's her pen name, Bell Hooks. The real name was uh, Gloria John Watkins. Bell Hooks was the name of her great grandmother uh, through which the writer wished to honor female legacies. Uh, try to interpret this idea about the female legacies. So there, are, there are legacies, there are uh, heritages, there, there are ideas that inherit, uh, that, that are inherited by uh, people in their own life from the past. And uh, females have in fact uh, uh, expressed themselves in specific ways in all as, uh, periods of history and particularly in the previous two centuries uh, so far as Europe and America are concerned. So uh, she wants to connect meaningfully with the legacies of the past and one way of doing it, of course a, a, a slightly a simple uh, method is that you uh, assume a name of a grand, great grandmother uh, whom you will immortalize, uh, whom you will uh, you know, uh, tell people uh, about and uh, they stood for a struggle in life, they stood for identity in life and it's not important whether they failed or succeeded. In, in, in their aim, the important thing is that they tried. So this is the female legacy part and uh, 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 Gloria John Watkins is bell hooks so far as we are concerned. Author and activist based in America, Hooks wrote primarily on race, feminism and class. Uh, activist, uh, you know that uh, you write uh, mainly but you also uh, take active part in your surroundings. You meet friends, you meet neighbors, you meet your readers. Uh, you go to the market and there also you discuss. You interact with people and uh, always uh, invariably you talk about your ideas so that you are able to create a kind of stir, a, a kind of movement in the thinking of the people around you. So that makes you an activist. You may give lectures, you, you, you may take part in rallies, you may uh, issue uh, political statements. All that is a part of activism in our world. And uh, she is based in America and America as you know is one of the greatest nations and, and a modern nation uh, uh, to boot because America came into being as a, as a country, as a nation only in the uh, 17th, 18th centuries. In the 18th century, they uh, also fought for their independent, rights of independence and they became actually United States of America then. So uh, that is important uh, that there is a voice of a woman uh, from America and uh, she belongs to a race. Now race is, a, is, is not a, exactly a good category because uh, human beings are human beings and they cut across uh, different races. But then whatever, wherever you are born, you, you carry certain things from there 
and one thing that the, the blacks in America carry is the color of their skin because of which they become also targets of prejudice, wrongly of course. Uh, the, so race is there, then feminism is there, feminism is uh, the fight by women uh, actively involved in social struggles and the fight is for uh, equality uh, with, with, with males which doesn't exist in, in most societies even today. And class, class here means uh, whether you uh, belong to the lower classes, whether you belong to the working class, although whether you, whether you, uh, you know, in the, in the modern sense, you belong to the bourgeois class, the capitalist class. And uh, this class angle is very important in our life because if you are born with property, if you are born with uh, industry, if you are born with finance, uh, then, then you are one kind of uh, person. And if you uh, are born uh, to the professions, uh, if you are born to work, if you are a worker, then it is a different class. So she is aware of all these categories that, that are social in nature, that she is a black woman, that, that, that she is a feminist and that she is, uh, also belongs to the, the lower classes, the, the poorer classes, the deprived classes and the most important for the uh, exploited classes. So a cultural theorist and a uh, public intellectual, Hooks was an example of committed writing. So all these are heavy words and uh, you should try to understand them in simple terms. Public intellectual, taking part in public activities, also giving one's thought, the kind of orientation that the public needs. A cultural theorist uh, basically is uh, talking about ideas uh, that are there in uh, you know culture, in literature. Uh, in, in, in ideas, in ideology, all that is a part of, and, and morality. All this is a part of culture. And a public intellectual uh, that I have already explained, Hooks was an example of committed writing. Committed writing, uh, she, she does not uh, 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 basically, primarily explore and then come to know what is right and wrong. She already has thought in her mind as to what is right and wrong and then you know she wants to spread that awareness among the people and she is quite clear uh, in her aim whether the aim uh, is, uh, is, is, is something that is that is harsh that is not uh, rightly clearly acceptable but then the committed person knows that uh, uh, she or he uh, is, is right. So that way uh, she is a person with convictions, she is convinced of her ideas and opinions and uh, she would explore within those uh, parameters of uh, commitment but then uh, basically uh, she knows that this is what she is she, she's supposed to do. <coughs> she was born in 1952 in Kentucky, United States and she died in 2021 that is just last year. So she uh, is born and brought up uh, in the uh, uh, latter half of the 20th century. Uh, she, uh, her formative years are uh, le let's say 70s and 80s and then her active years, active years are 90s and then they come to uh, the, the, the present century, the, the first decade and the second decade and uh, in 21 she dies. This is also important because when we are dealing with feminism uh, of different uh, varieties, phases, uh, time segments, then uh, she belongs to our own segment. If she were alive, she would only be uh, uh, 50 years, uh, uh, 48 plus 21, she would be uh, 69 years today. If, if she uh, 20, 22, uh, she would be uh, 60 years uh, today, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 70 years today. So which means that uh, uh, she belongs to us, she belongs to our, our period and she uh, is, is aware of the problems that women uh, and uh, people who agree with and accept women as equals uh, are concerned with. So that is important. So we are ending our, our discussion uh, today on this note that we are up uh, so far as uh, the, the information, so far as the developments in culture are concerned and that she is uh, our representative, our voice today. <coughs> the books Bell Hooks is known for are, now just see, Ain't I a Woman? That is one book. Am I not a woman? But, but, but she would like to talk in American English, the lingo, the language of the street and uh, see uh, and uh, the, the, even the title is you know uh, worded in the uh, conversational style, Ain't I a Woman? And uh, what is the answer? The answer is yes, you are a woman, definitely you are a woman, we accept you as a woman and uh, as a woman you have your own rights. But she is putting a question and this question is there, a part of the title. Then feminism 
uh, in uh, is for everybody. It's not just for 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 uh, uh, let's say the Americans or, or or at the most the Europeans. It's for everybody all over the world. And she is actually a voice of and a representative of uh, feminism all over the world. And everybody also means that uh, feminism of the upper classes, the middle classes, and the lower classes. So whatever way. You interpret uh, the the uh, title of the second book uh, th that I mentioned here as an important book. Uh, Feminism f is for everybody. Then all about love. Uh, this, this is an inter interesting title, like the like the first one. All about love. So uh, nothing is outside love. That's what she means. She also means that uh, she will always talk about love and not outside it because there is nothing outside love. So this is the interpretation that I give uh, to All About Love and uh, this, this book is published in 1999, just a year before the uh, present century. Then she has a, a book called Communion, The Female Search for Love. Uh, it has a direct connection with the previous title of the book and uh, Communion means uh, communication, Communion means bonding, Communion means concern with somebody else and, and, and you want to remain in touch. All, all these words are, uh, you know, words for uh, 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 articulating the the concept of uh, uh, you know equality, exchange, uh, conversation, uh, and communication. The female search for love. So why why uh, focus upon the female? Uh, and it's, it's, it's the title that that I'm uh, mentioning. So you have to ask this question uh, from yourselves, and you have to answer it yourself uh, before you take the book in hand and start reading it. Uh, the female search for love. Uh, actually, what she might mean is that uh, men always search for love, but do women also do so? Are they interested in love? Uh, this, this is a question she is in a way indirectly posing and the question is really very relevant. And uh, the, the last book that I mentioned, there are many other books also, the last book I mentioned is The Will to Change. The Will to Change and see the word will. Will, will means determination, will means uh, desire. Will means you definitely will do it and you will not compromise on it. All this is a part of changing the world. What does changing the world mean? Is, isn't, isn't the world good enough already uh, uh, in its present form? Uh, I, I raised this question uh, 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 to myself and I also raised this question to yourself. Does this world uh, require changes? And of course, um, most of us would, would, would agree that it requires changes because it's, it's not a uh, problem-free world. It's not a world, you know, where there, there are fewer problems. It's a world which is, which is full of problems and therefore people have to uh, rise in some kind of uh, critical opposition to the, the state of affairs and uh, they should then try to change decisively. <coughs> Now, uh, the uh, question that I first raised, it's uh, uh, not as important as the other thing that I have said, the use of the lower case. Uh, you would have seen in the previous thing that uh, certain titles are uh, written in the lower case. Uh, there is no capital letter there. Uh, entire woman is all in small letters. Even her own name uh, on the title page would be uh, published in the lower case, in the uh, lower, uh, you mean without the, uh, without the use of the capital letter. So the use of the lower case in books is, in, in books is titles, who is important? What is important in writing? What is important in the field of culture? And the answer is that uh, it is the idea, it is the argument that is important, not the individual. Who says is not important? What is said is important and therefore why stress upon uh, the uh, use of the uh, uh, you know, capital letter, uh, use small letters uh, write your name there because nobody should uh, take attention of you as an individual, as a person, but your ideas. Everybody should have all readers should listen to you, uh, listen to her, uh, read her, uh, and, and 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 not you know uh, uh, find out who she is, what she does, and all that. So uh, in order to stress this idea of expression. Uh, which you know goes towards argument and not towards uh, the, the individual uh, in the, the knowledge and information about the individual. Therefore, she was using the lower case. For her, feminism was a blueprint of a political movement. So she, uh, I have already uh, generally uh, accept, uh, uh, explained this idea in terms of change, in terms of a movement, and uh, she she wants change. She wants. Uh, uh, you know, a political kind of uh, uh, modification of the circumstance and for that she is offering a kind of a 
uh, scheme, a kind of a blueprint, what is to be done first, what is to be done later, and <coughs> what is to be done towards the end. <coughs> Bell Hooks has <coughs> emphasized intersectionality of race and feminism as an important point. Now, this is a new word I am introducing to you. Uh, it is called intersectionality. What does it mean? It simply means that there are different sections in society and that they are connected. And uh, when they are connected, then, they, 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 then the idea becomes intersectional. That is connection between different sections. Why is she uh, focusing upon intersectionality? Uh, in a way, I think uh, we should uh, sit up and think of this ourselves also. Uh, are we merely literary students or are we also a part of society? As a part of society, are we also not <coughs> men and women or we are merely students? Are we not uh, uh, North Indians or South Indians or all, all that or uh, we, we simply belong to one category? So, uh, this idea is questioned. The idea of one independent uh, section of society is questioned. So, you actually should share your views with other sections of society also. And if you do that, then you will find that your ideas get a new kind of strength. They become um, wider in scope, uh, they, they are uh, widely, broadly, largely acceptable and they appeal not merely to the students of literature but also to the students of history, to the students of economics, to the students of science, those who don't study these areas uh, in the university or colleges but those who remain on the street, they are in the villages. So, those sections also are important and if we know that then we are actually using the word intersectionality. So, that is defined by Oxford Dictionary as <coughs> the interconnected nature of social categorizations such as race, class and gender. So, these are three different categories. They are called social uh, categorizations as, as the dictionary says and they are regarded as creating overlapping and inter, in, interdependent systems. So, uh, there is no difference. There is a difference, but then uh, there is an overlapping. So, some certain things are common in all these things and she wants to uh, uh, preserve uh, commonality and uh, she goes against discrimination or disadvantage. So, uh, this is a new approach. The, the idea became clear only in the uh, first uh, 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 decade or at the most the second decade of the uh, uh, present century and in, uh, this intersectionality became important then. <coughs> Bell Hooks' views on life and society, uh, these I will just take up in, uh, 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 in, in a brief way so that you know what, what kind of a writer, what kind of a feminist, what kind of a uh, uh, person believing in ideas she is. So, let us take a few quotations from her. And this is how uh, one can read that. Knowing how to be solitary is central to the art of loving. Now, see, the words are once again loaded. The words are once again rich in connotation. Uh, you know, for instance, uh, you have to be solitary. You have to be lonely. You have to be apart from others. Uh, you, are, you are a part of society, but then you are also a being. And when you, are, when you sit alone, that is central to the art of loving. It's a beautiful uh, idea, the idea about love and uh, love is an art. L love is a, not a kind of a scheme, love is not a social arrangement, love is not concerned with, with marriage and uh, association. Love is something else. What it is, uh, she, she would not tell and uh, most of us don't know what love is because love is an art and uh, we all try to uh, love. We love our friends, we love uh, uh, the, our equals, we, we love people uh, else, uh, living elsewhere and for the woman particularly, uh, love has a special significance. So, that is why she is using the word solitary for the art of loving. So, you sit alone and then you decide, then you think about what love is and then you learn how to love. When we can be alone, she says, we can be with others without using them as means of escape. A difficult idea. If you are alone, then how do you remain with others? So, she says we can be with others even when we are, are alone. So, which means that uh, you, you are alone. So, from you uh, speak from a distance uh, uh, about the people that, that surround you and then because you think about them, therefore, you are alone and not alone because then, then you are actually with the others and uh, you do not use them as an escape. You use them as a, as, as a, as a connecting uh, segment. So, this, this is a good idea and uh, what, what it means also is that uh, uh, feminism of her kind is wholesome. 
it's about love it's about a love between individuals it's love about uh, people who are equal and people who respect one another so that's a beautiful idea let's think of another idea love is an action never simply a feeling most of us think that love is a feeling but so far as she is concerned she says no it's not just a feeling simply a feeling it is also an action action means you should tell people that that you are a lover that you love and that uh, if they if they don't like it then they have to go over it in their own minds and find out what you mean if they accept you uh, and and your ideas then of course they feel strengthened by uh, your your support to them and in any case uh, love actually is a is an action that you actually uh, commit to uh, in your life and that strengthens people no black woman writer in this culture she see no black woman writer in culture can write too much if a writer, if a woman writes let's say uh, a book then she could write two books also she could write three books also so don't think that she writes only one book and uh, this is to be kept in mind uh, women should write more and more what is writing for her writing is an act like love Uh, when you write then you write for others when then you write for publishers then you write for readers then you write for listeners then also you write for people who talk about your your ideas and views and because women have not written much earlier uh, uh, therefore this is the time when they should write as much as possible because it's never too much indeed no woman writer can write too much she says no woman has ever written enough most of the time you know there there, there have been curbs uh, on, on women uh, so far as writing is concerned and therefore write as much as possible and and that will definitely help you as well as the people you write about and uh, there's no difference between the individual writer and the person uh, one one writes about because all of them are a part of what what she calls act <clears throat> then another idea the process begins with individuals women's individual women's acceptance that american women without exception are socialized to be racist classist classist and sexist which is a wrong thing one one should not be uh, let's say a uh, uh, racist one should not be a classist uh, that is believing in your class and going against another class and sexist that one is a woman and and that others are males so uh, american style she says and i think she is talking uh, using the word american but this is true about uh, women all over the world in all countries that you know uh, the process begins uh, in in a kind of acceptance by the individual to become socialized and this is a wrong thing why should you accept you know socialized ideas ideas about society uh, under the parameters of racism classism and sexism so so these things have to be uh, uh, you know kept in mind always so that uh, once you know uh, they are negative ideas then you will try to you know, differentiate yourself from them and uh, retain your independence and therefore she talks about labeling labeling ourselves uh, feminist doesn't change the fact that we must consciously work to rid ourselves of the legacy of negative socialization so this is the uh, end, ending of the lecture that uh, socialization can be of two kinds one kind is that you socialize in order to uh, spread your ideas and your awareness so that you can change the world and fulfill your will and the second is that socialization is uh, uh, accepting and uh, propagating wrong ideas the, the ideas of race the racism is a negative idea so is the sexist idea that one uh, there is a section of women and there is a section of women that that's a that's a negative idea and we accept it without knowing what we are accepting that is called socialization and therefore she uses the word she doesn't doesn't mince words she says very clearly that there is a negative socialization so uh, in this discussion uh, we have discussed bell hooks as a feminist black feminist voice in america uh, she belongs to our own time and she talks about the issues that women face today and these women are not confined just to america but to all the countries are they are there in all the countries of the world and they have a, a common plank for struggle against all these prejudices which she calls negative socializations thank you